So it's not every day I get to announce something like this. Maybe you've seen it on social media already. In any case, this is Mike Mangini's Rhythm Knowledge, Volume 3. This is a book that I co-wrote with Mike, which is the third book in his Rhythm Knowledge series. For those of you that don't know, Sean studied with me at Berkeley and quickly showed me qualities that made me want to work with him to pen Rhythm Knowledge 3, 4, and 5. Mike's first two books had a massive influence on me. I read these when I was in high school and I've spoken about them on the channel many times before. Volume one deals with the ins and outs of how to practice. So how to get the most out of your practice time by understanding the learning process. Volume two deals with what to practice. And this contains the core rhythm knowledge exercise systems. Volume three, that's the new one, is a system in and of itself. And it was such a massive practice concept that it required its own book. It's the critical connection between volumes one and two and four and five. Volumes one and two are system oriented. It's the cognitive processes. And then, okay, what are you supposed to do when you sit down as a musician? Again, for all instruments. What it means is that you're prioritizing what to do in the inner game to be able to express yourself more musically without soaking up your mind with all the mechanics of actually counting things and, and you have more CPU in your brain freed up to be more musical. That's what they're designed to do. This new book deals specifically with stickings and a system called the Ultimate Sticking System. And these are exercises that I have used personally that I continue to use because they're so effective. In fact, there's really nothing else like them. So the Ultimate Stickings are a very powerful way to acquire vocabulary, to gain comfort with odd times and odd rhythms because you actually work with all numbers from 20 down to two. and they can be used to develop coordination by layering the stickings over the top of an ostinato, for example. So it's a comprehensive collection of both the most musically useful and mechanically relevant sticking. So you're not gonna see these obscure permutations like one right hand hit and 10 left hands, because who's gonna use that in a song? This stuff is all very practical and arranged in a very specific order that allows you to learn extremely quickly. I have used the systems in the book for rapid skill development with my pattern recognition, with my ability to put together collections of notes in a polyrhythmic environment, uh, an odd time environment, because that's my job, right? right? So this uh, approaching it this way gets directly to the core of the issue, which is being able to use it musically, which I have to do in a hurry. Got to do it in For a sure. hurry. It's nine, four, nine, nine but it's nine, nine, eight, four, four. You want to write it down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stickings act as sort of a direct route to the sense of touch, to feeling, mm. which is at the end of the day, what we all have to have or we can't play anything. Remember all the uh, Afro-Cuban rhythms that you had to learn to get a grade? <laughs> yeah, right, yes. I often thought of something resembling a quintuplet when doing those, uh, when trying to execute a laid back triplet. Because like, so like I'm thinking, boom, you go one, two, three, four, five, to sound like instead of this perfect triplet, it's like you're late. Yeah, yeah. And then you know that can be done, of course, by feeling and feeling alone. And you and I are not trying to say to break it all down with calculus and calculate exactly what that is. It's, it's not the point. The point is that the exercises give you the ability to actually not count the stuff, to actually just feel it and maybe be inspired by a thought, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two,
that to or to duck 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 Pow! You know, and with the kick drum landing on technically one and a, a one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a on the ah, you can swing it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You can swing it a little bit. You gotta swing it. You know, so in the cases that's appropriate. It's like what what's appropriate for the situation. So this book gets right to the core of things, which is the feel. Of course. There are explanations that can crash your eyes, but we didn't do it in a way that's complicated. It's very simple to learn. The only thing that's going to be in anyone's way is this. Oh, I don't. Mm, I, right. I don't want to. Uh, okay. Yep. Nobody's for. Nobody's forcing anybody. These are designed on the surface just to get a bunch of notes that make up a 17 note pattern or any note pattern. It's also designed to accumulate more speed more quickly. But as you know, it's not for the sake of just playing a sticking faster because they just sound like a bunch of rolls. Right, right. It's for the cognitive speed and management speed so you can do things like replace what would be two right hand hits in a sticking with a right and left foot hit, you can stack one side of the body versus the other or hands versus feet for ostinato type things. And I'm not talking about crazy complex dual time signatures here. I'm talking about normal, quote, normal everyday ostinatos like a samba, bayou with the feet, stuff like that. I mean, this this can go back to like Ringo Starr with the kick drum going boom, boom, boom. That's an ostinato. It goes back to the early days of drum clinics, where if you went to see a drum clinic, the drummer either went into a samba or a bayou at some point, you know, uh, and, and they soloed against it. This system helps us prioritize what we're thinking and when we're thinking it so that you can maintain that ostinato and know exactly what and how to play against it with whatever available limbs that you have. And this approach is what has allowed me to, for example, wire up an ostinato in the left side of my body. I use this in a song with my band, Sungazer which is this sticking between my left foot and left hand, which left my right hand and right foot free to improvise or maybe play a different beat against them. So that's just one musical example that I find really exciting that was 100% enabled by the exercises that are now this book. I mean, the whole left side against right side coordination thing, that was a door that was closed and I didn't even know it existed before I came across Mike's teaching. So it's great to have this as a resource here. You know, a lot of people have asked me, how do you play this song? How do you play that song? How do you wire up that ostinato? What do you practice with the other side? The answer is, grab this book and go through the stickings against it, because that's exactly what I did. And it wasn't until I started working through this stuff, again, long before it was actually a book, that I was able to play that stuff. And to my surprise, it actually didn't take that long. Talk about your experience with how much more skilled you were able to become in a short, an incredibly short amount oh, yeah. of time. It's crazy. It's, I know. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, stuff that I, I couldn't even begin to understand what was happening when I would listen to, you know, certain drummers or to some of the stuff you play. Yeah. And then to see not only that I could understand what was happening and therefore appreciate it more, but to be able to learn how to do that in a very short period of time just speaks to how well these systems work.
Yeah, and also this is a very important opportunity to speak about the application from the point of the groove drummer, the drummer that's not going to really leave the realm of, uh, let's say, standard 4-4 or 12-8 swing time and and stay in that realm and just live there their whole lives enjoying it and doing wonders with it, doing things that nobody else is going to sound like. The joy of the groove can be enhanced to keep more consistency when you want it. And then if you want to SL around or decel around, or there's just control to be able right. to do that in a way that pleases the person. Again, I'm just the messenger. This is what I'm told, that they are happier with this just straight up 4-4, straight up swing, whatever it is. So talk about your experience and the effect of this on your ability to succeed at Berkeley. Right. Well, yeah, this is this is perfect. Let me mention this. I took a number of drum labs with you, one of them being the polyrhythms one and two. And I have to admit, before I took the class, I was a little skeptical. I was maybe a little bit in the groove guy category there thinking, is this actually going to be useful to me? I mean, I've got all these other classes that seem very applicable. You know, I want to learn my different styles of music and become a well-rounded working musician. And I thought the polyrhythms would be fun as like an extra thing to throw in the mix. But what surprised me was that that class did more for my timing and my groove playing than anything else. Because what that class was about is placing notes in time, right? You might be, you know, five notes or, or four notes, but just learning how to play four notes or two notes evenly in the space of one beat. I mean, I can't tell you how impactful that was. So to anybody that is maybe skeptical of, do I really need to learn this uh, polyrhythmic stuff? It's not about the polyrhythms necessarily. It's more about the skills you need in order to play polyrhythms are the same skills you need to play things in time and have control, which is ultimately what you were talking about. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. So it's, 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 Nice to hear someone other than me say that. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. and you know, and also the other thing is that is if you think about groove drummers that everybody likes that can do all the polyrhythmic stuff, let's just bring up Steve Smith and Vinnie Kaliuta. Sure. I don't think it's an accident. And I don't think it's a coincidence that they studied with Gary Chafee. Mm. And what did he do to really help the polyrhythmic thing and the groove thing and everything is he used stickings. Yes. And it's mm-hmm. just, it's not an accident. None of that's an accident. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. The reason that Rhythm Knowledge 3 is not a reproduction of what Gary did or what anyone else did is that there's a specific set of stickings that are grouped in, in into four chunks, A, B, C, and D. And that those chunks are broken up into even and odd and those chunks are also broken up into stickings that repeat after every one phrase or that take two phrases, or, as you wrote in the book, flip. Yes. That flip. And the other difference is that the system works from large to small. And it just, it speeds up our ability to take in information, process it, and spit it back out because that cycle cannot be avoided. That's how human beings work. Don't blame the messenger. It's just how human beings work. I just we're just trying to help. That's all. <laughs> right, we're just right, trying right. to help. You know, for me to put together rhythm knowledge in the first place was a way of sharing to give everybody hope because I felt like I didn't have hope with certain musical things I heard that I just couldn't wrap my head around. I definitely couldn't play them. So I knew that this way that I had was able to control my senses of sight, hearing, and touch, uh, and my thinking processes, because I knew that's what got me from A to B. And I knew I could show that to people, explain it to them. And I did, and it worked. Now, the more I did that, the more people came to me to study. The more people that came to me to study got me to the point that I was able to leave my job as a software engineering aide, and I just got to the point of being promoted to full staff engineer with no degree. And so, you know, just so people know the history 
of why this exists. I just, it's about hope. It is, and that's that's exactly what I've gotten out of the Rhythm Knowledge books. I mean, I read these when I was 17, 18, something like that. And I remember, you know, opening up that first book and going, huh, that makes sense. Let me see what else he's got to say. And I sat there and I read literally every page of both the red and blue, these exact books that I'm holding here. I just read them both in one sitting because I couldn't put them down. I said, this just makes too much sense. And it gave me hope and it continues to give me hope. And this new book has given me an entire new dimension of hope because I know I have the tools now to learn basically anything that I want to. And mm -hmm. it's no longer a question of, can I do that? It's just a matter of putting in the time. That is correct. Um, the system weeds out bad habits because the more you practice a bad habit, the harder it is to unwind it. The system provides a way to learn how to throw a dart or a bowling ball better because you're in touch with your body and you start to understand that. And it's not overcomplicating it. It's uncomplicating it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at that sense of turning away from what you don't want to hear. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to know about that, that whole thing. Uh, look, for me, to think about the permutations in rhythm knowledge too, and the sheer amount of combinations makes me go, ah, I don't want to, <laughs> that's too much. I, I, I don't, I know. No, 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 no. Or the whole speed thing, it's like, you know, I never thought I'd ever say like, I'm oh, fast enough. I don't want any more than like students of mine are going faster. Students of mine are playing this better, this better, this, 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 you know, all these things. And you know that, you know that being one of the, you've chosen to take a certain path. In fact, there are things you were able to come into the, to the lesson and play that I didn't, I didn't, I, I complained. Yeah. Because I didn't do them. Well, yeah. Yet. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, you did, you played a couple of things. I was like, oh, wow. And you know, and you can you can actually witness, be a witness that that brought me more joy than anything. I was like, my smile on my face, like God is so cool. Mm. And because I just feel like when people take it and do things with it, I get that inspiration back. And that is, you know, the way to probably close out the whole rhythm knowledge thing, especially the stuff in book two, is you choose who you want to become. Mm. Yeah. Those those are just the those are the seeds. Rhythm Knowledge 3 is a fruit of those seeds. I'm applying it to my foot chops because I didn't really play the drums for a month when I got off tour as I had to just redo six areas in my facility here. It was stuff was mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. rewiring everything, labeling, starting from scratch, you know, all the kits are functional now. There's, the control room is amazing, all, all that stuff. So I didn't practice. So what I did is I used the stickings with one side of my body and put my remaining foot between the beef. And I, I've never had my feet go from one speed to another so quickly in all of my life. So I don't need the, I don't need much time to practice. I practiced for 30 minutes before talking to you and I saw progress. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Wow. It's, just, it's, it's like, it's almost not fair. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. It's almost not fair, so that's that. So people who are listening and watching, if you, if you wanna have that unfair advantage, definitely pick up Rhythm Knowledge Volume 3. Anything else you wanna add or? Just so, so people know that I do host classes that they can yes, right. uh, study with me and that on my Vimeo page, I only chose two of the systems thus far, clockwise, counterclockwise, and not quite double, because those two are really the crux of everything and that I put play along. So it's very step-by-step. Step. It's very slow in tempo. It's really, it's, it's, anybody can do this stuff. So um, they, they can access that information as well. Okay. Great. So thanks so much, Mike, for taking the time. Thank you, Sean. So go check out Rhythm Knowledge Volume 3. It's available now. You can get it on Mike's website. This has been a really special project for me personally, not only because I got to work with my former teacher on this, who also happens to be one of the greatest drummers ever, but because what's in this book has so profoundly impacted my own playing and practicing that it's really great to be able to share this with others now. So go get the book. It's on Mike's website. Thanks for watching.